Hey everybody, it's Derek Lamartin from CodeOpinion.com. When should you choose synchronous or asynchronous communication when interacting with another service? Should you use HTTP to send a synchronous call or should you use a message broker and prefer asynchronous messaging with say something like a venture of an architecture? I'm gonna break this down on how I think about it, whether you're using a command or a query, where you're sending the message from and to, and how resilient to failures do you wanna be? So when I'm talking about synchronous calls, I'm really referring to things that you may expect of using an HTTP API, where you're sending an HTTP request to get back some response, a request response. This could also be something like gRPC or anything that's RPC related. So where I think about you're actually gonna do this are interacting with third-party services usually, because you don't control them, you don't own them. There may be things you need to integrate with, and most times these are gonna be things that you have to communicate synchronously with. Second is infrastructure. This could be things like your own database. These are do th things that you're a part of your core of your application, but they could be like a cache, a database. And then lastly, the place most obvious is when you're making a request from the client to your server to get data. But that part is an interesting one because it depends on whether you're making a command or a query. So I'm talking about asynchronous communication using messaging and a message broker. I'm really advocating communication between your own services, services within the overall system. So this could be that you have a billing service that's communicating with a sales service or an accounting service, but those communications are done all asynchronously through messaging. This could be events, they could be commands, but you're doing everything asynchronously. This means that you have to have well-defined boundaries within your service meaning a server should have all the data it needs to operate autonomously. It shouldn't have to make a synchronous call to another service to get data. It should have all the data it needs. And then lastly, it could be the application itself or service. If you have a service, you can use messaging even to communicate with your own service. If you have a monolith, you can do the same thing. You can use messaging to asynchronously decouple code. So commands and queries play a big role in deciding whether you wanna be synchronous or asynchronous. So let's first talk about queries, because this is the question I probably get the most, which is, okay, I use messaging, but how does that work when you're interacting with a, a UI? Well, you're not using necessarily messaging there. So if you have a client UI, and then it needs to send a request to some service or application, yes, at that point, you're making that synchronous call. That's gonna be a synchronous call, likely over HTTP. And then your service, whether it has to interact with a database, if it's gonna do that, obviously that's gonna be synchronous and it's gonna basically build its result and then send that back to the client. So there's nothing wrong with necessarily this being synchronous. When communicating between services, however, I recommend asynchronous messaging. This means that you have a service, when something's happened to it, it's gonna publish an event, for example, that to the message broker, and then you're gonna have maybe zero, one, or a many different services that are gonna consume that event. That means that the message broker's gonna push that message to your other services so they can consume them, so they can react to things that have happened within other services. The reason I don't recommend synchronous calls like HTTP to communicate between services is because of the complexities related to latency, availability, and resilience. If you want more info on that, check out my video about REST APIs and microservices and things you need to be aware of. A small example of this though, is let's say I have a client UI and a service that needs to talk to a third party. Say there's a third party service, could even be a database, anything that we're gonna be making another synchronous call to, is what happens when we make the call, but there's a failure? Let's say it's a transient issue. Let's say that third party service or database or whatever the case may be that we're interacting with isn't available. Yes, you can have built-in retries, exponential backoffs, but if all that fails, what do you send back to the client? Do you just send back an error message to the client that there is a failure? If that third party service that you have is critical to you, are you just gonna be down as long as they're down? Now this is very different if the originating request on how we need to process something is starting originating from a message broker and not a client UI. That means that if we have a message broker that sends our service a particular, and we're consuming some particular message, that once we're doing that, we need to interact with that third party service but that third party service is unavailable, well, this is very different now because we can retry, we can do our exponential backoffs. And if that's not fail if that's still failing, we don't need to necessarily return an error to our client because we have no client. Our client is technically the message broker. So at this point, we could decide to retry later, put our message into a dead letter queue so we can process it later or investigate later. But 
necessarily from an end user's perspective, nothing really ever failed because they weren't aware that we were even processing the message. For example, let's say we have a client UI that's making a request to our service to place an order. That is a synchronous call to our app service to process that order and to create the order. But instead, what we're gonna do is instead of interacting with our third-party service or our database, rather what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a message send that to our message broker, a message queue, and then we'll just disconnect from our client saying, thank you, your order has been placed. But we actually haven't processed the order, we haven't created the order yet. All we've really done is create a message in our message queue, which asynchronously at this point, we can then interact with our third-party service. And if it's unavailable, that really isn't an issue, we can retry, as mentioned, put it to our dead letter queue. If we retry and it works, at that point, our actual order has been processed and has been placed. But if our third-party service is down, we never lost the order, we just weren't able to process it right away. So then oftentimes the question is, well then how do you let the client know that something's actually been processed after the fact asynchronously? Well, you can do that, and I'll illustrate an example in AWS of how this happens all the time. So let's say that our client UI is making a synchronous HTTP call, and yes, we're doing the same thing as before, Instead of processing it right away, we're just gonna create a message that represents that request, what we wanna perform, whatever action it is. We put that to our message broker, to our message queue. We tell the client we're good. We then process it completely asynchronously. And once we finish processing it, we can then go back and use something like a push notification, something like SignalR with WebSockets to then push down to the client to tell them that something is actually finished. And you can do this asynchronously. A good example of this is in the AWS console for EC2 is I have a running instance. Now, if you haven't used AWS, you can probably relate this to any other cloud service if you're thinking about a VM, is when I go to stop this instance, when I send the, the actual request that's gonna make an HTTP request back to their service, I don't have, it's not, the request isn't gonna take minutes and it's not gonna be blocking in terms of waiting. It's actually gonna just finish that request very quickly and then asynchronously send updates or polling back to the browser to actually tell me it finished. So if I go to stop this instance, it says I successfully stopped, but I haven't really stopped. If I refresh right now, we can see that it's stopping. It hasn't stopped. I'm able now to interact with the console and it's not blocking. I don't, I'm not sitting there waiting for it to finish and stop because what likely happened is when that request was sent, it created a message, a command, to a message queue that's processed separately asynchronously. And then in the AWS console here, it's actually polling to see status changes for my actual instance. For when it's actually stopped, it will show that it's actually stopped, but it wasn't blocking. These aren't all synchronous calls happening from the client to the server to some other service to actually stop my instance. So the first thing to think about if you're making a synchronous call, is it a command or is it a query? If it's a query and it's originating from a client or a UI, then this makes sense that it's gonna be a synchronous call because you want a response. However, if you need to make a synchronous call from one service to another service to get data, I take a look to see if my boundaries are correct. And for a command, again, where did it originate from? If it's from a client UI, do you fully need to process that message to give them back a result? Or like the example in AWS, can you create a message and likely process that asynchronously and then notify the client separately after it's been processed that it's complete? If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.